So with watchOS 10, Apple's bringing a slate of new cycling features to their native workout app, many of which that we've been wanting for quite some time, including the ability to pair speed sensors, cadence sensors, as well as power meters. And not only that, they've also come out with a nifty feature that turns your iPhone into a display showing all the stats that are being collected in your Apple Watch so you can see those right in front of you when you're riding. Last year with watchOS 9, they added a lot of running focus features like running power as well as automatic track detection, but this year with watchOS 10, all us cyclists are actually getting some love. So in this video, we're going to go over all the new cycling related features coming with watchOS 10 and kind of all the ins and outs of them, such as how the Apple Watch actually works with smart bike trainers like the one I have right here. And at the time of this filming, all these features are available through Apple's public beta program of iOS 17 as well as watchOS 10. And then later this fall, iOS 17 and watchOS 10 will officially roll out to everyone. And and since this is just beta at the moment, I'm guessing there's going to be changes to some of these features over time, such as, let's say, enhancements to the UI or some bug fixes. But I at least wanted to give you kind of just a general overview of how it all works right now. So first up, let's go ahead and talk about a new feature that works alongside your iPhone, where it uses your iPhone to display the information that's being collected on your Apple Watch. So it kind of turns your iPhone into kind of like a bike computer display sort of thing. So what happens here is when you go to start a cycling workout, a live activity pops up on your phone showing that you're recording a cycling activity along with a timer. And then when you tap on the live activity, it displays all the metrics that are being collected on your Apple Watch. And the reason why this is such a great feature for cyclists is that trying to view stats on a watch while you're riding is kind of challenging because you either kind of have to turn your wrist or take your hand off the bar. So what this does is that it just puts the information right in front of you so your hands never have to leave the bars. So basically what happens here is that all the data pages or workout views that you have set up on your Apple Watch will appear on your iPhone. So what you can do is just swipe through all these views, which is just much easier to do than swiping on your Apple Watch or trying to rotate the digital crown. And along with being able to see all your workout views, you can also pause and resume your workout from the phone itself and you can even mark a segment by using this button in the lower left hand corner and if you prefer to just not use this feature you can also just go ahead and stop viewing if you want and what's interesting about this new feature is that it's not necessarily mirroring what's displayed on your apple watch and what i mean by this is that if you swipe and change the view on your iphone it's not changing the view on your watch and vice versa your phone has all the same workout views that your watch has for that particular workout but one isn't necessarily mirroring the other in real time so like here if i change the workout view on my my watch, the workout view that I have on my phone stays the same. And I actually quite like how this works because you could actually have more data available to you at one time if you think about it. So what you could do is have your, let's say, heart rate zones or your power zones being displayed on your iPhone and then have more like distance and elevation data being displayed on your watch. And what's cool about this new feature too is that it's not only for the outdoor cycling profile, but also the indoor cycling workout profile. Now this feature does require a really secure mount for your phone though, so it doesn't go flying off your handlebar. So the one I was using for this video is one from Peak Design, where it comes with this really, really nice case as well as this incredibly secure mount. And when I say secure folks, it's really, really secure where it uses a combination of magnets as well as a latch right here to keep it on your handlebars. And I'll have a link down in the description below where you can find one. So next up, let's talk about their new support for external Bluetooth cycling sensors. And these include speed sensors, cadence sensors, as well as power meters. But not only that, it also supports smart bike trainers like I have right here. So in terms of the pairing process for any of these sensors, all you have to do is just go into your settings on your watch and then go into Bluetooth. And then from there, as long as your external sensors are awake, they should just show up here as a health device. And then all you do is just tap on any of them to pair them. So with dedicated speed sensors, these will be useful for indoor cycling with a Wheelon bike trainer so you can track your speed when you ride inside. So before, what happened when you use the indoor cycling workout profile is that it would track your time, heart rate, and calories, but that was kind of it. But now if you pair up a speed sensor, it'll also track your speed. But interestingly, it currently doesn't track your distance, which is just something that can be easily derived from speed. That could just be a beta thing though at the moment. And then if you wanna go ahead and track your cadence, you can also do that too if you pair up a cadence sensor. And by the way, with speed sensors, you do also have the option of specifying your wheel size, which is needed for the most accurate speed and distance measurements. And if you're looking for some good options for some speed and cadence sensors, I've reviewed some from Wahoo as well as Garmin that I can recommend, and I'll have those videos linked down in the description below. But the other type of external sensors they've added support for are cycling power meters. And this is a pretty big feature for cyclists who wanna get even more meaningful feedback during training. So for a quick primer, cycling power meters provide basically instant feedback to the amount of force or power that you're generating. And that can come from power meter pedals, power meter cranks, there's rear hubs, as well as smart bike trainers like I have right here. And the reason why cycling power matters is that it can give you an idea of how your training is paying off. So basically think like if you're able to maintain more power at a lower heart rate, that means you're likely getting stronger. 
stronger. And while running power is a fairly new metric in the whole scheme of things, cycling power has been around for quite some time. And while they used to be pretty expensive to get into, there's actually some pretty inexpensive options at this point in time. And what you get when you pair a cycling power meter to your Apple Watch is a new workout view and new data fields that you can choose from during your workout. And by the way, if for some reason you're not seeing this workout view, just go into your workout settings for either the outdoor or indoor cycling workout profile and make sure they're just toggled on. And then the pairing process is essentially the same here as with the speed and cadence sensors, but with power meters, there's also a setting for your crank length, which is important for an accurate measurement. And there's also an option to calibrate your power meter, which is a good practice before riding. And what's nice about this too is that when you pair up a power meter, cadence information is usually transmitted alongside with power. So if you pair up a power meter, you should just automatically get cadence. You don't have to necessarily pair another sensor. And the same thing goes for smart bike trainers, by the way, too, is that all that information is gonna get pulled in. So you get speed, distance, cadence, and power just with one pairing with your smart bike trainer. Now, one thing I do wanna note though is that if you have a smart bike trainer that only has one Bluetooth connection, you may run into a little bit of a hiccup here depending on what kind of training platform that you're using. So let's say I'm using something like Zwift where I wanna transmit my power data from a smart bike trainer that only has one connection. Well, the smart bike trainer is gonna be transmitting to your Apple TV and it doesn't have any available Bluetooth connections left to transmit power to your Apple Watch. And the same thing goes in the other direction where if you have your Apple Watch paired to your smart bike trainer that only has one Bluetooth connection, you won't be able to pair your smart bike trainer to your cycling training platform like Zwift. But thankfully, there are a lot of bike trainers out there that do have more than one Bluetooth connection, but I just kind of wanted to point that out in case you run it at a hiccup. And along with collecting your cycling power, another new feature coming with watchOS 10 is the ability to automatically detect your FTP. And again, just for a quick primer, FTP is your functional threshold power, or basically the amount of power that you could theoretically maintain for an hour straight. And basically it's a great way of gauging how your training is paying off. Now, the traditional way of getting your FTP is to go through a pretty grueling test, whether that's actually holding your highest power output that you can for an hour straight, or going through a shorter, but arguably just as painful like ramp test where the power increases every minute until you pop. Either way, both of them are really painful. <laughs> But there's also more automated ways of getting your FTP with more just like normal riding, I guess you could say, based on your power and your heart rate zones. And that's what Apple's trying to do right here with this new feature. And all you have to do is just go on five different rides that are over 10 minutes long with some harder efforts to get your estimated FTP. But in terms of the accuracy, the automatic calculation is coming up pretty short for me compared to my last actual ramp test. And I've been doing all sorts of rides from steady state rides to intervals to longer rides, as well as some mountain bike rides. And although it is changing a little, it's pretty far off from my actual FTP. FTP. And for comparison to some other platforms that can automatically estimate your FTP, so Garmin has me at 261 watts and then using Trainer Road's automatic detection, they have me at right around 280 watts, which is in line with my last actual ramp test. So at the moment, I'd say that the automatic FTP detection is certainly in the beta phase, but I'll be definitely testing this a lot more during the summer and the fall just to see how this changes over time. And I'll have some updates on Twitter, Instagram, or threads or something like that if you want to follow along. But in this sort of case, you can also update your FTP manually, which will in turn update your power zones. And then you can also adjust your power zones manually as well. Now, being that these features are just in beta for the moment, there's certainly some areas where I'd love to see some improvements other than the FTP detection. So with the external sensor support, I'd love to see some sort of indicator when I go to start a workout that a sensor is actually connected. And then in regards to the power meters, right now it's only supporting single-sided power. So let's say if you have a pair of dual-sided power meter pedals, it's only gonna be reporting one value. But based on the fact that power meter support is a pretty big feature for cyclists and the fact that they actually did add power meter support, I'd have to imagine dual-sided power meter support is on their radar at some point in time. But overall, this is a pretty big step for the Apple Watch for all us cyclists. There's just a lot more data that we can collect natively and it's just gonna make it a lot more compelling option. We have been wanting some of these features for quite some time now, but hey, they're at least here now, or at least will be officially here in the fall. But I think what's going to be most interesting is how they leverage all this information with Apple Fitness Plus, because there's already platforms like Zwift, Trainer Road, as well as Peloton who utilize power in their workout. So what are they going to do with their own platform? Anyhow, if you have any questions about the new cycling related features on Watch OS 10, make sure to leave those in the comments section down below. And if you found the information in this video useful, do me a favor to quickly hit that like button and also subscribe to the channel for plenty more sports tech videos that are right around the corner. In the meantime, happy riding and we will see you in the next video.